Today, we're going to look at two of the built in TypeScript utility types, pick and emit. Pick and emit are really useful for type transformations. So we're going to take a look at how to use them in this video. To get us started here, we have two simple types. We have a user type, which of course represents a user in our system. And then we have a prospect type, which represents someone that we think might become a user soon, maybe because we sent them a marketing email or an invitation, something like that. Now pick and emit are both types that allow us to select a subset of the fields in a particular type. And we can take a look at what this means right here. Both pick and emit take some type as their first argument and then a union of keys from that type as their second argument. And what we get here when we pick from user, we're picking the first name and the last name fields. And if we take a look at our rendered user, you can see that this is just first name and last name out of user. So of course, first name and last name and user are both strings. And so when we pick those off of user, we get strings. If we were to change last name to say a number, which doesn't really make sense, but you can see of course that that propagates through to our rendered user because we are actually just taking whatever the type of last name and also, of course, a first name for our rendered user type here. Now, omit is kind of the opposite. So when we say we're omitting over prospect and we just want ID here, what that means is we're skipping ID and we're going to take everything else. So if we hover over rendered prospect, we can see we've got first name, last name and referrer. And of course, if we change referrer, then we can see, of course, that we have a referrer coming through in the same way. So pick and omit are kind of the inverse of each other. They're both ways to select a subset of fields off of another type. But pick lets you define an allow list and emit lets you define a deny list. Which one should you use really depends on your particular scenario. So for example, with pick user here, if I'm selecting first name and last name, this is a really safe way to do this because I know my rendered user type will only ever have first name and last name. If we add additional fields to user over time, they're never going to appear in rendered user. And of course, the opposite is true for rendered prospect. If we add new fields here, for example, maybe we add an uh, invite at as a date, maybe something like that, that is now added to our rendered prospect user. Whereas if we add another field to user, if we look at rendered user, we can see, of course, that it's not added here because it is not in our list of picked elements. Now, the real world example here might be defining the types that you're exporting from your API. Often you'll have some internal representation of the type. Maybe that has more data, more fields than you want to share with the public consumers of your API. And so you want to be able to render a smaller version of that. And that's exactly what you could use pick and emit for. Now defining types for external consumers is pretty cool, but we can also use pick and emit to define better types for ourselves within our applications. I like to also use pick and emit for helping me transform types when I'm pulling data from a database. So let's say our user type here is the record as I might pull it from the database. And that's great, but I need to transform it a bit before I can use it in my application logic. And so that's where this rendered user type comes in. First thing I want to do is omit the created at and the hashed password field. I'm omitting hash password, of course, because I don't need that in my application logic, don't want to have access to it. Created at, I'm omitting because it's the wrong type. As we can see on the user type here, created at is a string. But what I'm doing then is intersecting this with another type where created at is a date. And so now my new rendered user type has everything that this original user has minus the hashed password. And we've also converted created at from a string to a date. And so now I can write a function maybe called like hydrate user or render user, something like that. And it takes that user type straight out of the database and transforms it into what I need to use for my business logic in my application. And so this can be a great way to build a rendered user type that depends on the user type. And of course, the nice thing about this is as we continue to add fields to user, those will appear in my rendered user type. Another kind of riff on the same idea is you can have utility functions like remove dates here that can operate on perhaps many types across your system. For example, remove dates here just takes some object T where T extends created at as a date and updated at as a date, but these are both optional fields. And of course it will just remove those. And so we can strongly type this by saying we emit from T those two fields that we know are on there. And so if you will have common ways of transforming your data before you maybe either use it in your application or before you share it with the consumers of your API, emit provides a pretty handy pattern for that. All right, let's look at one more practical use case this time of pick. And I like to call this pattern flexible function signatures with clear primary intentions. Let's say we have a send marketing email function that takes a user and sends them an email. Now let's say we want to extend our system to also allow us to send marketing emails to prospects and not just users. 
Now, this function as it stands doesn't actually allow us to do that. But let's say I can look at the function body of this and I recognize that I'm not actually using most of the data that comes with the user. I really only need to use their first name and their last name. What I could do is change the function signature to look something like send marketing email to here, where the argument that we take is no longer the whole user type, but it's the subset that we specifically need for this function. So we can pick the first name and the last name fields off of our user, and we can have a new function that only needs to take those two fields. Well, now that this function only takes those two fields, if we take a look at our prospect here, you can see that prospect does meet those requirements because a prospect does have a first name and a last name. In our example down here, we call this, this actually works. We've got values here for our user and our prospect. And of course, when I try to call our first function with send marketing email, we find that prospect is not assignable to type user. Even though prospect may have all the fields we need, unless we specifically say that we can accept a subset of those fields, TypeScript's not going to allow it. TypeScript can't know the way that you're going to use the type. It only knows what you say the type is. And so this is a really handy way, I think, to write functions that can take a broader range of things perhaps, but they do make it clear that we probably expect this function to be called with a user value most of the time. Of course, we could define this differently instead, right? We could just take those first name and last name fields from our user. We can create a new type here and then just use that in place of our pick here. And this works exactly the same way, as you can see. This accepts both a user and a prospect because user and prospect are both super types, you could say, of first name and last name. So that can work. The reason I prefer the other approach here of using pick is because it provides a little bit of documentation about my original intention for this function. Maybe I originally wrote it with the expectation of this being a user, but it can work for other things as well. And so maybe that's something I would probably want to document in a comment or in other ways, but but it's a nice way to strongly type that intention. Those are a couple of neat ways that you can use pick and emit in your practical everyday coding. If you have other examples, leave them down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.